Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. And this work is brought to you by the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Irwin Lab, and the Schoikit Lab. This work is supported by the National Institutes of Health. And our topic today is finding ligands with multiple genes in zinc-15. First, I just want to clear up how easy it is to do this with one gene and why we need a special video just about multiple genes. So we're going to start with a video. Uh, we're going to start with a live demo of how to look for ligands for individual single genes. So if you go to zinc15.docking.org and under the biological menu you choose genes and then you select browse, you can see all the genes right there. Uh, now there's there's pages of them. There's 3,200 genes. So if you're looking for a particular one, let's say serotonin 5A, then there it is right there. We've just searched for it. So this is, it's a GPCR. It's a membrane receptor. There are three orthologs, each of which you can get compounds for. 332 observations. You click on that. It takes you straight to the observations. You can simply download them by clicking on this button or you can go back look and get the individual substances, only the ones that are purchasable, or you can get compounds that have been predicted for this gene. Okay, so this is not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is when you want to look for multiple genes at the same time. And uh, before I get into the actual examples, and we'll take up three different examples, I just want to remind you that there are help pages for every resource in Zinc. So, this is the help page for substances, and ultimately we're asking questions about substances today because we're asking about compounds that are annotated for uh, genes. And so this page goes on and on and on, but there is a uh, help, there's a pointer to, a, to our wiki for help about how to use these pages, and there's also a syntax document, probably too complicated uh, to, for, for some of you to use. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But we are building a graphical interface for more features in Zinc. Uh, unfortunately, we had to build Zinc first, and then we build the interface for it. So we're releasing it as quickly as we can. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the Zinc query language, the Zinc 15 query language. It's used both for the web pages and for individual queries. So I want to introduce a couple of ideas here. So this idea of looking for genes, any name, means of all the genes annotated for this compound, one of the names must match this criterion. Got that? Okay. The suffix hyphen in allows a plus separated list. Thus, genes any name in DRD3 plus DRD1 means, okay, that the, the compound must match one of DRD1 or DRD3. Tilde allows for not, thus tilde genes any name, DRD1, means that one of the genes annotated for this compound is not DRD1, i.e. this compound is not known to bind DRD1. All URL criteria are anded together. So let's look at three different examples. Well, the first question we're going to look at is substances that are annotated to hit three genes. And we're going to pick three examples here, uh, serotonin 3A, dopamine 3, and dopamine 1. In all cases that I'm going to show you, the prefix is always the same. HTTP colon slash slash zinc15.docking.org slash substances. And then that last slash, uh, generally, you gen just put it there. Uh, the system puts it there for you. Now, after that final slash, we're going to say genes any name HTR3A and genes any name DRD3 and genes any name DRD1. So it means this it's only going to match substances where all three of these matches is true. So these are all ended together. And so if you do that and you can see the URL in the top of the page there, you get these compounds. And there's 13 of them. And if you click on each one of them, It'll take you in and you can check to make sure that it's correct. So the second question we're going to look at is substances hitting three genes with a combination of and and or. So for instance, hits 
dopamine, serotonin 3A, and dopamine 3 and or dopamine 1. Okay, slightly different question. Same prefix. This time it's genes any name HTR3A and genes any name in DRD3 and DRD1. You see how intuitive this is? You're basically saying th that it has to be one of those two plus this one. And there, these, these two constraints are anded together. And if you put that all together, the query looks like this. And I, again, I apologize that we don't yet have an interface that allows you to ask these questions uh, by just clicking your mouse. We're working on it. We'll get, we'll get there someday. Substances hitting two genes and not a third. Okay, so serotonin 3A, dopamine D3, and not DRD1. Same prefix. This time it's, you can, it practically writes itself, doesn't it? Genes any name 3A, genes any name DRD3, and not genes any name DRD1. And if you put the query together, you, there's only four compounds that satisfy those criteria. The thing to remind you of, which you already know, is this just because something is not reported to bind in Kemble does not mean it does not bind. There's lots of things missing in Kemble. So these are always questions about the data that we've been able to import into Zinc based on Kemble. I'd like to point out that we have a new paper about uh, Zinc 15. It's called a Ligand Discovery for Everyone. It's over at JCIM and it's free to download. I encourage you to have a look at it. And uh, was that helpful? I hope you've learned a little bit about the Zinc command language, a little bit about how to AND and OR constraints together, and how to look for compounds that are known to bind more than one gene. Uh, the, this work is supported by the National Institutes of Health. If you like this, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. See you next time. Bye-bye.